how you start your career in devops and i would like you to think about all of these questions that you are seeing on the screen right now you know it's very very important uh, because there are a lot of freshers with the same question and there are a lot of industry people who are right now trying to switch their domain from some other domain like testing or from system administration or you know linux administration to the space of uh, cloud and devops you know so this is in something in regards to starting your career in devops we will have a similar video probably uh, sometime around next week in regards to how to start your career uh, with cloud based technologies and so on okay so but this is for devops so the first question that i would like all of you guys to think is how an application is being developed what kind of practices are you using are you using uh, the monolithic architecture or are you going with a microservice based architecture or are you going with some of the patterns of serverless where you are refactoring your application to support serverless based uh, methodologies in terms of app development and now you can think to yourself akshay devops is more about ci cd iac and configuration management and all that but why do you say that you know think about how an application is developed and the reason i say that is because devops is nothing but developer and operations and developer is the is is non existent right you you don't study the development aspects and you always think to yourself if i do a ci cd pipeline that's all devops is all about of course not you need to think like a developer to be a really good devops resource and then comes the operation part of it which is only 40% but you need to understand how applications are developed which is the 60% aspect according to me in regards to how i have crafted my career uh, throughout the last 4 years to be in this position right now so the first thing is think about how an application is developed and now the second question that i would like like you to think about is what kind of application it is is it a back end application that you are deploying or is it a android based application or is it a front end application or is it an ios based application or is it just database scripts uh, that you are you know creating as a stored procedure or probably just a file of sql syntaxes and so on so think about what kind of application it is and then think about the three tier architecture think about how you would create a highly available fault tolerant network for your three tier architecture and then think about how you would possibly expose your front end application to the outside world there are multiple strategies and how you would possibly deploy your front end application and then how this front end application integrates with the back end and how you can deploy your back end application what kind of programming language are you going to use and then whether that back end application is developed using monolithic practices whether it's a very big monolith or whether you have segregated it into different microservices and how these microservices integrate with each other in terms of api calls or application programming interface calls and then how do you host your database and how do you deploy your database scripts these are all things that i want you to think about before even going towards the operations side of things as part of devops and the next thing is i want you to think about how the integration or the interaction between the layers happen how does the front end talk to the back end how does the back end talk to the database uh, how are your api calls created you can have an api called slash students to list all the students uh, but you can also have an api called slash students that would allow you to create new students so i would like you to think about how you would possibly use the http methods of get put post patch delete and so many other methods in terms of the interactions between the microservices or the integrate uh, or the interaction between your back end your database and so on and how would you also go ahead and create uh, the crud operations which is create read update and delete whether you are creating new records or whether you are reading some records or whether you are updating any records in your database or whether you are deleting any records in your database i want you to think about all these things okay and then comes as to what are you deploying you are deploying an application but what kind of application is it is it just a stand alone java application or is it an enterprise java application with a web page extremely sorry i think i just logged out 
Yep. And then whether it's a Spring Boot application with Spring MVC in place, or whether it's a .NET application, or whether it's a Python application, or whether it's a Golang application, I want you to think about all these things. Let me see if the live is continuing. Yep, I think it's continuing. Beautiful. Okay. So once you think about how you are deploying and what kind of application it is, I'm just going to move around my cursor so that this laptop doesn't sleep off. It's my office laptop, so I can't modify that setting. So after thinking about all these things, then comes as to how what is the strategy that you would possibly use to deploy an application. I want you to think about that, whether your application is just going to be hosted on virtual machines or whether you are possibly going to use a cluster of virtual machines with a new strategy called as Docker installed, which works with microservices-based applications, and the new normal of deploying applications where I think at least 30% to 35% of the world has moved towards Kubernetes, which is a cluster of virtual machines that is running the Kubernetes uh, software, which has a control plane and a data plane. And we have a very nice video on the Tamil Cloud channel in Tamil for getting started with Kubernetes with EKS. I would highly ask you to take a look at that. So once you think about the strategy of how you are going to deploy your application, you know, it could also be if it's serverless, you could also think about how you would do it with Lambda and API gateways and DynamoDB in terms of the entire serverless framework or serverless stack. Once you have thought about it, next question that I want you to think about is, uh, you know, where are your applications going to be running? Are they going to run on on-premise based infrastructure? Probably when you consider banking or financial domains, you have OpenShift, which is Red Hat's product, which is a layer over Kubernetes, but has some enterprise features in it. Are you going to use on-premise in terms of OpenShift for container orchestration, or you're possibly going to use uh, just virtual machines created in your uh, on-premise environment? Or are you going to use cloud-based platforms like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform? And even in that, are you going to use an IaaS or infrastructure as a service-based offering? Or are you going to use a platform as a service-based offering, something like Elastic Beanstalk on AWS, Microsoft App Service on Azure, and Google App Engine on GCP Platform? I want you to think about all these things. And then comes once you have decided the kind of, uh, you know, where your application is going to run and probably it's on premise or cloud. I want you to think about how you would possibly create that infrastructure, whether you are going to use uh, some IAC tool like Terraform or Pulumi or CloudFormation or ARM templates or Google Deployment Manager using Jinja 2 and Python based scripts. Are you going to use any one of these technologies to create your infrastructure and there are benefits behind doing something like this you have organization wide governance and compliance you also can create modules which are reusable in nature you can create infrastructure that is immutable in nature that you can just create and destroy create and destroy it's like cattle you know so those are some of the advantages when you use uh, infrastructure as code based tool like terraform or pulumi and so on and then the next question that i want you to think about is how can you configure that in, uh, infrastructure? How can you install packages? So let's say, for example, if there is a company out there that is using close to 800 or 900 servers, how would you ensure that all these servers are in an ideal state, that they have an ideal configuration, that they have this, 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 this package already pre-installed? You can use some kind of configuration management tools like Chef, Ansible, or you can learn bash scripting or you can also go ahead and learn something like Packer by HashiCorp, which allows you to create Amazon machine images and Docker images, which have a set of tools already pre-installed. So now organization wide, you can create an Amazon machine image for Linux based operating systems. You can create one for Windows based operating systems. In that way, again, you have best practices in play. You have organization wide compliance and governance in play. So that's something that I want you to think about. This is if you are working with a fleet of servers, or probably you can use Ansible Tower, you know, a, re a really nice offering. So think about all these things. And then last two more questions is, think about how you would take the application to that infrastructure. We were discussing about how an application is developed. Uh, those are the first few questions. And then you make decisions in regards to where you are going to run it and so on and how you're going to create that infrastructure. 
but now i would like you to think about how do you take your application code to that infrastructure you can use any ci cd tool out there you can learn any one and then learn one after the other something like learn jenkins or learn github actions or learn gitlab uh, ci or learn bitbucket pipelines or azure devops or aws code suite learn any one of them and then do pocs or proof of concepts on the others after four and a half years of being in the industry or in the it industry i still take the efforts to talk to my close friends i would like to do a shout out to shriram and shri balaji who are my close friends who motivate me every single day to do more pocs so yesterday we spent the entire day doing pocs around uh, kafka and we were using the amazon's msk service managed kafka service in regards to that so you have to do more pocs for you to gain more knowledge you can't think to yourself that devops is all about just operations and just work with linux and one ci cd tool and call it quits if you want to propel your career much further you have to learn each and everything there is to learn in the market and my only personal advice to all of you is find your interest and don't filter any technology don't think whether i can learn this particular technology or whether it's going to become uh, you know outdated in a few months or whether it would you know bring down my career and so on this was a question that i got today morning in the telegram channel of kamlu cloud you know so what i would say this is don't filter any technology learn anything there is to possibly learn and keep becoming better so that you get a better salary so that you can take care of your families much better and you don't have much commitments out there there are a lot of people who have education loans there are a lot of people who have uh, loans that were taken by their father or mother for them i would just suggest keep studying be consistent do your hard work earn a really good salary pay back all of those loans and live a good life you are only going to go ahead and concentrate about your own life and how you set up a family and how you take care of your kid because you know that education is pricey you know that by the time that your kid finishes school you're going to spend 15 lakhs you know that by the time that your kid goes to college you're going to spend 2 and 1/2 lakhs per year how would you be able to spend that 2 and 1/2 lakhs if you are only earning 6.5 lakhs or 7 lakhs i would like all of you guys to go ahead and think about all these things on the non technical side and one final question that i want to think about is security we have an entire video of devsecops as to how you would do it in the pipeline using github actions and there is one more video that when i recently shifted to amsterdam in the month of april i did one video on devsecops i would like you guys to rewatch that video if you haven't and learn more about devsecops and how do you introduce security into your pipelines probably during the initial stages or during the development stages or even when your application goes to the uh, stage environment as to how you do dynamic analysis of your code and so on i would like you to also think about security so with just these set of questions now you have the right answers as to how to start your career in the space of devops you start by thinking about the first question and you end by thinking about the last question and then once you are wrapped up with all of this the industry is always going to keep bringing in more technologies i am going to keep growing in my professional front the people that you talk to are going to keep moving in their professional front so always stay in touch with the latest technology always keep following it do more pocs talk to more people on linkedin get get a lot of knowledge and you know the above is the basics and you can possibly learn that from scratch probably from code cloud platform a huge shout out to mumshad probably you can get it on a black friday sale for 3000 a year and they are bringing out many new courses and they are also bringing out cloud sandboxes sometime next year so it's going to be really amazing for all of you to learn more from Cl code cloud and become a really good devops engineer but just remember to yourself code cloud is only going to give you the basics code cloud is only going to help you get started but what i would like all of you guys to do is do more proof of concepts try more new tools try out read the official documentation half of us forget to read the documentation read the documentation do the exercises do the labs and then do a small project or reach out to me for a small project and then put it on your profile on your resume and get the job in the devops space after doing all of this and no shortcuts for you to propel your career further and the duration that this would possibly take is if you spend 1 hour a day for the need to know aspects and for all of your pocs you are probably going to complete all of this within 6 months or 7 months of time and then you could possibly take another 2 to 3 months to work on a small project 
or do more pocs and so on you know uh, but the three important things are labs practicals and use cases start small probably with just the first question and i have given you the answers over here start small and improvise over a period of time improve your career over a period of time and then bring in the creativity because devops is not something which you do in a said way devops is a mindset it is a process you can do it in any way that you want to but you should have good practices in play so thanks a lot guys uh, take care i'll possibly meet you in another live where we talk about how to get started with the cloud how to get your career started and so on okay see you guys take care and have a good day stay safe uh, see you later bye bye